Why is it so dark? Hi, YouTube. I know it's been a few days. I have been on the road again. I've been on the road again, but we back in action, baby. So let's get it. Let's not waste no time. Let me fix my lighting. Let me fix my lighting. There we go. Why is my light not bright like it's supposed to be? I don't know. Let's go. Lil Yachty started off his career on a dreadful note. Diddy, Diddy, shut up. No, I'm joking. I miss you, man. <laughs> How you been, bro? You been good? That's good. His very first interview made hip hop fans hate him for a few reasons. The first reason was this terrible freestyle. I was on his feet. Bro, hold on. Lil Yachty added like damn near everybody to his close friends and people were getting excited, bro. People were messaging me and was like, yo, I'm on Yachty's close friends. How do you feel about that? Like, 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 why are you asking? Like, why are you asking me that? Also, why are you trying to flex on me about that? <laughs> I think he added literally everybody to his shit. It's like, it was just so random though. It will be spinning vinyl. They mad cause a nigga just went viral. Ooh. They mad cause, you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't hype me up like that. Cause then I have to, the next bar has to be better. I'm like, not a kid really selling. Uh, in high school, I never was failing. I think, I think, I think that's why they mad at me. They mad cause they trying to grab that. Hey. They mad, stop, you can't. Oh, my fault, my, I got hype. You can't, you can't do that all right, though. All right, one more. Young, Nigga from the west side of town. Gotta but y'all gotta respect him for it. Like he's just having fun, bro. He was just having fun. And it's and I also you gotta respect Uzi for when he went up there and be like, I like I don't freestyle or like shit like I da 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 or whatever. <laughs> at least they didn't get up there acting like they was the best at that shit. Oh my gosh. And they like they kinda admit like, you know, it is bad too. Unlike, you remember when Smoke Purp just went up there and just kept freestyling? It's like, bro, like, maybe just like, yo, I'm just stop. Like, maybe I'm gonna just stop. He just kept going, bro. Oh, God, that thing, that was the worst freestyle I've ever seen in my life, man. Holy shit. I'm, I'm trying to think what to do. I don't know. I'm not a rapper. He should have pre-wrote some lyrics. I'm not a rapper is crazy. <laughs> to avoid the embarrassment then he followed that up by admitting he's i did vote for the sorry 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 patrick cc i'm talking to my people i haven't talked to them in in a, in a while okay it's been days uh i did uh do the the gamer awards that's gonna be posted on the channel not a rapper which people thought was just an excuse for the bad bars but the worst part of the entire interview was at the very end and the reason they so mad is because they think that the young kids don't take this hip-hop thing serious i honestly don't <laughs> he honestly doesn't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Last last time. Well, you know I'm gonna pause again. But somebody said, "How's Samir?" S A M I R. I just had to. I just had to address that. I just had to address that. He does. He's called having fun. I'm sorry. You're just having fun, right? Yeah. That's it. And getting money. Then again, I'm looking. I'm sorry. I'm looking at the keyboard. The S is next to the D. Probably a mistake. <laughs> That's it. It's yeah. all money getting. Yeah. Fun. It's just. It's just. We're just chilling. Lil Yachty straight up saying he doesn't take hip hop seriously and that it's just for money left a bad taste in the mouths of traditional rap fans. This was Yachty's grand introduction to mainstream hip hop. Most people thought he was just another mumble rapper, someone who will be here and gone within a couple of years. What they didn't know is that Yachty was on a path of domination. Behind his nonchalant attitude was an extremely hardworking and talented artist. Today, hip hop is in a dry, repetitive, and predictable hey! Where the fuck my blunt? Where the fuck my cut? Where the fuck my wrist? I'm smoking a kiss. I'm smoking a kiss. You know I'm a chief. You know I'm a chief. I'm glad you eat. Being crammed. Okay, so I wasn't even. I had no intentions of playing this song. I had no intentions of playing this song. But come on, bruh spot, yet everything Yachty touches turns to gold. Today we are going to look at how Yachty was hated and disregarded, then every single thing he did to build back his reputation to become the secret weapon the music industry depends on today. Mm. It's important to consider this first interview took place on Hot 97. For decades, this radio station was an opportunity for rappers to broadcast their talents, their art to millions of New Yorkers, which was the birthplace of hip hop. So his attitude wasn't just disrespectful to Hot 97, but hip hop as a whole. Mm. Hip hop fans ravaged Yachty online. They felt he didn't deserve to be on Hot 97 and he was a disgrace to the culture. But it wasn't just Yachty. All melodic trap artists face resistance. Yo, also last time, last time people, the people in the comments, not even everybody, it was just like, you always know those, 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 those few people were mad because I didn't dick ride the haters that were hating on uh, Dixie and, and uh, the Charlie D'Amelio's whatever. 
they were mad be- like because I wasn't agreeing with what these haters were saying. I just called them haters and NPCs and bots. They are. And I'm assuming you're mad because the shoe fit you. Yeah. I'm 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 assuming the shoe fit you. So it's like I stand on that ten toes. And if you're mad if you're still mad about it and talking shit in the comments, like you're literally the NPC I talked about that the that the YouTube algorithm algorithm needs. We need people like you. Thank you, hater. Future Amigos, Young Thug, Lil Uzi Vert were just some of the few that traditional hip hop fans thought were ruining the sound by simplifying it too much. Yeah. Everybody trying to rap the same style with the, uh, I don't know who created it, if it was Future or Amigos, but all them niggas sound the same. To make them even more mad, Yachty was added to the Double XL freshman list just a few months later, which is another huge stamp of approval from the music industry. The 20 And that shit was like the best group in the freestyles. 16 double XL freshman cipher it is, is an what iconic it is. piece of rap history that marks a distinct shift in not just the music but the attitudes of mainstream rappers. Come on, Lil Uzi, 21 Savage, and Kodak Black borderline mocked the legacy of double XL as they who the fuck pit is less I had <laughs> They really did mock that shit, bro. They laughed and joked through their freestyles. And although Yachty was laughing with them, he actually took his freestyle more seriously. Wasn't no fool for rice. All of these bitches, they want me, but they get one night. I give a fuck. Yeah, this is equivalent to when like the teacher's literally talking about your history. Like the history of the United States or like the presidents or niggas who freed the slaves. And you just in the back of the class laughing, throwing papers. <laughs> like, bro. Pay attention to the game, man. What you saying? This nigga know I ain't playing. It seemed like Gaudi didn't want to get bullied online by rap fans again. It felt like he was trying to prove himself as a rapper. Turns out, that was exactly right. Mm. Two weeks after the freshman cypher, Yachty dropped a song called For Hot 97, along with his Summer Songs 2 mixtape. This track wasn't a diss, but Ebro at Hot 97 took it that way when he tweeted the song. Lil Yachty and his team with these high school ass bars. Followed by an Instagram caption that read, Another Lil Rapper Caught Feelings. Then Yachty responded, I didn't catch feelings, it was just to show that I can rap. It wasn't a diss to you, good sir, it was simply more like a check this. Actually, f*** hot 97. I'm not finna try to explain myself to no one dissing me. Oh, man. But it didn't stop there. Yachty called Ebro on Hot 97 Live and tried to explain. I didn't catch no feelings. It was Damn, he really like pressing him. To show what's good. And nigga, you, nigga, that shit is hard, bro. I, I don't care if you 69, bro. Like, <laughs> like, 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 Yo, f*** that, man. F*** that. These high school ass rappers, I'm gonna keep testing y'all. Although many people thought Ebro was being an old, sour hater, it seemed like they were able to laugh and have mutual respect for each other. But fans were not as quick to forgive Yachty. It's fans that's literally, yeah. It's literally their job, man. <laughs> literally their job to just be mad at everything for the, for the rest of eternity. Especially because during his Pitchfork interview, he said something that would haunt him for the rest of his career. <gasps> Is this the Tupac thing? But first, I recently found out I'm being charged every month for subscription service I don't even use. What? But today's sponsor, Rocket Money, is here to help. Need Rocket that? Money is an all-in-one finance platform that helps you save 18,298 dollars is your monthly spending. That's insane. Save more money and spend less. But I guess they, I be, I, they be getting paid though, I guess. Yes. Like, who's this supposed to cater to? Holy shit. Like, can you make it more like to a broader audience, man? Who just has, chat, do y'all have 220K in your, uh, in, in your savings just as an average, like, average person doing your daily, daily, you know, routine? You. I'm, I'm talking, I'm talking about, bro, you, go, you wake up and you go to work, Krishna, oh my God. This personal finance app allows you to- Krishna literally flies to a whole nother state just to, just to get, pick up a car. Like, I'm not talking to you. <laughs> I'm not talking to you, man manage subscriptions, lower bills. I remember when I worked at Wendy's, I, I could barely keep uh, $200 in my savings. I would just take from it every 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 two weeks. Build a custom budget and grow your savings all Stop in one moving place. The camera. I'm, using I'm not trying to move the camera, bro. It just keeps moving, bro. I can't lock, like, like, I can't lock this shit in place or, or, or nothing. Maybe this is the locket. I don't know how to, I can't, I don't know how to lock this thing, man. Maybe it did one. Nothing, nothing locks it. It just keeps shaking, dude. Using Rocket Money to- You weren't in my city. You were in the state. You were in Virginia. You weren't in the beach, bro. Cancel those subscriptions I forgot about and just don't use anymore. What? Rock what? 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 can unlock what? Really what? overrated that the notorious B.I.G., one of the greatest rappers of all time, 
is overrated. He later doubled down and admitted he can't name five Tupac or Biggie songs. His brutally honest opinion about two rap legends made headlines across countless news outlets. Gun in head, name, name five Biggie songs. Chat, name them. Name five Biggie songs. Chat, just because you can't name something, like, doesn't mean that they're ass. It just means you don't know about it, bro. It just means you don't know about their, their shit, bro. Continuing the same narrative that he That's all it is, man. is a disgrace to hip hop and should not be celebrated by the culture. But he didn't need their support because at this time his song Broccoli peaked at number five on the Billboard Hot 100, as well as his viral 2015 hit One Night slowly crept up to number 49 on Billboard. His debut mixtape Lil Bo as well as Summer Songs 2 were cult classics. His music at the time can be described as carefree bubblegum rap with a heavy reliance on autotune. But others just called it mumble rap, thanks to Wiz Khalifa. We call it mumble rap. Oh, so y'all got a name for it? Yeah, me and my homies. I mean, it ain't no disrespect to the little homies, but like, they know what's up. They say they don't want to rap, you know what I mean? But it's it's cool for now. It's going Broccoli is super nostalgic. Evolve, and I feel like those artists, if they want to be around, they'll, they'll Wiz figure Khalifa. out the next thing to do. But right now, that's what's popping. Although Wiz meant no harm by this term, it became weaponized by people who hated the new sound, such as Funkmaster Flex of Hot 97. <laughs> Remember to edit that out. <laughs> a radio DJ who would often complain on his show about the new state of hip hop. Yachty once again felt like he needed to show these guys he could rap. Ordering so he food. got on Ebro's Beats One radio show and spit some bars. Lucy Ducey, the jokes on you, I didn't grow up the boosy. All I care about is feeding my family and getting out of that camera. Funk Master Flex, please stop talking about me. Unless you're finna play my song, then don't talk about me. Again, classic hip hop fans were not impressed. Bro, y'all got like y'all gotta admit, like when he did when somebody does a little song, like damn, he's doing better. And the you should you should actually appreciate the fact once again I'm talking to like NPCs. They're NPCs, but I'm just really just talking to express. You should appreciate the fact if you if people want to use this word critique so much like they used to love that they use they love to use that word critique when they're actually just hating and shitting on somebody to critique somebody is to let them know like hey maybe you can improve in this or do something better the fact that he's actually trying to improve on something he's actively trying to and they're still shitting on him that's hating that's not this is not criticism you're just hating on him bro like what the fuck Holy shit. They still relentlessly called him trash in the comments. This man can't catch a break. They don't like the music he makes, but then when he switches it up, they still don't like it. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Holy shit. An actual smart man. This isn't an NPC. This isn't an NPC. This is a main character living his life. This deserves thousands of likes. Thousands. How come a nigga that gets on here with a shitty ass profile picture that says L gets thousands of likes? Because hate feeds. Hate hate is like the symbiote. Hate is like the symbiote. And then if, if a nigga hates and there's other niggas who hate and they hate their lives and they just they just they just hate, they just hate. They just hate everything because they hate their lives. They just hate it. Run, run, Mary Jane. Run, we are haters. Run. <laughs> Bro, that part was so fucking fire. Mary Jane. Run. Oh <laughs> sorry, I'm fucking this freestyle prompted Funk Flex to take another shot at Yachty. That's cool, mother 
fucking bars, nigga. Fucking you know nothing about that. You know why? Because you a mumble rapper, Bow Wow, a mumble rapper. Lil Yachty, you don't want nothing too. At Neither all. you niggas want nothing. J. Cole dropped a song called Everyone Dies, which seemed to take shots. Uh, it's called Everybody Dies. Dude, do your research. I can't watch these videos anymore. Holy shit. Neither you niggas want nothing. J. Cole dropped a song called Everyone Dies, which seemed to take shots at Yachty. Bunch of words and ain't saying shit. I hate these rappers, especially the amateur eight week. Patrick, you know I'm joking, but you never know when your fans might be in here, like, be on my day. Like, why the fuck is he reacting to Patrick CC? Fucking lazy bitch. Fuck you. It was a joke, dude. It was a joke. Relax. <laughs> rappers, Lil Whatever, just another short bus rapper. Then Yachty responded. I'll f with J. Cole, bro. Say whatever you want to say. I mean, I don't listen. You tried it. You tried to make it. You tried to make it messy. You don't listen to J. Cole, but, but you f with J. Cole. Some people even confronted Yachty to his face, like Joe Budden. This was legendary. I want you to know whether you in a 360 or not. Calm down. <laughs> Chill, dude. <laughs> I want you to appreciate the culture that changed your life and took you from college dorm room eating f***ing oodles and noodles. I want you who's well-spoken and articulates himself well. My nigga. Chill. This moment was particularly interesting because Joe was the personification of all those hate comments and it was truly embarrassing to witness. Yeah, it was. By Yachty just simply responding with chill made people realize that hating on a kid who's just doing his thing is annoying and corny. Because uh, it's like it's like all the haters literally got a mirror put up in their face when they see when they seen Joe Budden snapping like that. Because that's literally how they be in the comments with their veins popping out their necks. It's like, holy shit. That's like, yo, is that me? Holy shit. Maybe I'm cringe as fuck. Because Yachty just could not stop succeeding. He dropped a song alongside Kyle called I Spy. Oh my gosh. That theme. I ain't gonna lie. That instrumental. I use... I use that instrumental in so many videos as just like background when I'm talking, bro. A nursery rhyme inspired Bob that peaked at number four on the Billboard Hot 100, then followed that up with another hit, Peekaboo, featuring Migos. Oh, his my fans, gosh. who were primarily teens, loved his style. He was weird, he was fun, and he was unapologetically himself, which opened the door for three massive brand sponsorship deals with Target, becoming the lead creative designer at Nautica, and a Sprite commercial which remixed his song Cold Like Minnesota to Cold Like a Sprite Soda. And little Yachty here was paid by Sprite to write lyrics about Sprite. It was reported that Yachty made that is like y'all gotta bro. That is just amazing. Y'all gotta really think about that, bro. That year alone is that like he made enough money to retire. Made a staggering thirteen million dollars during his extremely short career. Yachty was a super villain. See what yo? You see what can happen when you're not like doing this gangster persona. When you're not mad at the world, bro. I mean, look, shout out to YB. I like some of his music, right? But oh my God, everything I see about him in, in, in like blog pages is an Instagram post on a black screen with white words talking about he don't need no fucking friends and fuck the industry. Dog, it's okay to be, it's, it's okay to be like a nice guy and happy sometimes. Calm down. Into classic hip hop fans, but he truly was a sweet and kind hero to his fans. You know how hard it is to actually be mad, bro? Like there's a study that it's actually physically, it, it, it takes more, effort to, to make a sulky face then to just smile bro I'm like holy shit unfortunately his debut album would fall short of expectations teenage emotions released may i remember everybody's tripping because them, them niggas was kick kissing on top 26 2017 sold just 46,000 copies first week peaking at number five on the billboard hot 200 when i first released my teenage emotions album i thought that it was fire then the sales came back and i was devastated and so confused i worked so hard mm. honestly the album was kind of bad little did he know he already peaked musically he would never have a more successful song than i spy or broccoli and his music struggled to impress people outside of his fan base. His yeah. second album, Lil Boat 2, sold 64,000 copies, but likely was inflated due to the incredible list of features. Quavo, NBA Youngboy, Lil Baby, Lil Pump, Trippy Red, just to name a few. Mm. And again, the album was- Trippy! Blackluster. Yes, 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 we are. Relax. Calm down. Calm down. Yes, we are. Relax. An ongoing conversation surrounding Yachty's music career is that he is carried by features or only has success with other artists on his songs. Damn. His third album, Nothing to Prove, speaks volumes about his attitude. It sold 40,000 in the first week and peaked at number 12 on the Hot 200. Hip Hop DX said he is bringing nothing new and it may be time for him to go back to the drawing board in search of new ideas before returning with a follow-up project. Most people fell in love with Yachty's music on his first two mixtapes because it was fun, cheerful, and positive. By his third album, he was 
slowly transitioning to fit in with the gangster rap status quo of the music industry. Don't get me wrong, he had a few bangers along the way. NBA Youngboat, Boom, Get Dripped, but they were buried in bloated albums of inconsistent music. Yeah, yeah. To make things even worse, his day one friends were switching up on him. The sailing team was a dynamic group of producers and artists surrounding Yachty, yeah. Cody Shane, J Ben. Cody Shane, bro. The sailing team was a dynamic group of producers. Bro, her potential is through, was through the roof. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck happened. I think she's still dropping. I think she's still dropping stuff. But like, I don't know what happened, bro. Cody Shane. She, bro, she could have been. I don't know. J Bands, Earl the Pearl, Big Brother Chubba, The Good Perry, Aaron Vercetti, and BU. None of them were even close to as successful as Yachty, but he says it's not his fault. The sailing team became like my brothers and sisters. Yeah. I kind of felt the need to kind of take care of them, right. you know, yeah. but it got to the point where I was spending so much money, yeah. like almost a million dollars trying to like create this company out of my own money. Right, right. And they didn't want it for themselves. You yeah. know, like Yachty tried to put them in a position to win. He never had contracts with them, never wanted any percentage of their success, just wanted them to be the best versions of themselves. But they simply did not want it. They were lazy. Trying to worry about people seven don't want other like people's careers was holding Yachty back, so they decided to split up. 2019 and 2020 marks a major shift in Yachty's career. His commercial success after this would be even less impressive, but he did not fall off. He started to observe the shifting landscape of hip-hop. He kept a bird's eye view over the entire culture and tried to figure out how he could make an impact. So smart. What you are about to see is how Yachty may not have been doing impressive sales numbers, not selling out stadiums, not winning awards, but he kept his finger on the pulse of hip-hop culture. His creativity had a massive impact on where hip-hop is today, but where he started might shock you. With the rise of artists like Cardi B, Megan Thee Stallion, and Doja Cat, it was obvious female artists were in high demand. The City Girls were a duo from Miami buzzing ah. with Ah, anthems yeah. like period and twerk. Yachty decided he would discover his inner baddie one night in the studio. What is Afternoon don't I? Looking sexy today, bro. Ilya Farak. Oh my god, bro. No thanks for the donation, dude and write a song for the City Girls after his friend Earl the Pearl made the beat, and out came their most successful record to date, Act Up. But everything that everyone is singing and all, and I wrote the whole thing. You so you, you were in there, like, how did I come to you? Like you were just it, like, I just, real I just, ass bitch, give I just, a fuck about it, nigga. I just thought like them. I know what women like to hear. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, you know, like, yeah. I'm not, like I literally was sitting there, I was like, yo, what's just some raunchy shit? Act Up peaked at number 26 on the Billboard Hot 100 and was a huge TikTok anthem that even young men couldn't resist dancing to. This track is still being played in the clubs today, but it doesn't stop oh there. Act Up was sampled by Megan Thee Stallion just a few months later in her song Hot Girl Summer. Earl also produced this beat and the song peaked at number 11 on the Hot 100, which was Megan's most successful song at this point. Female rappers were being encouraged to embrace their bossy, brazen nature and let it out on Boss the song, bitches. which as we all know led to tracks like My Type, Savage, Big Energy, WAP, and it all started with the vision and lyrics written by Lil Yachty. He proved he could have a bigger impact on the culture, so it was time to have one last hurrah before he changed up for good. Oh, Lil Boat 3 was the official death of Yachty's previous music career. Now the pandemic slowed everyone's lives and careers down. Yachty achieved his lifelong dream of collaborating with Drake on the song Oprah's Bank Account, which brought that carefree Yachty energy his fans once loved. He did bring that energy throughout the Lil Boat 3 project, but it was on- Oh shit, hold on, Daniel. Daniel had just got back and there was like some weirdo like just stopped like she's parked and some weirdo just like stopped the car right behind her and then as soon as I opened the door they drove off so that was weird Honestly, his harder rap songs like Split Whole Time, TD, Pardon Me, and West Side that stole the show. With just a mere 30,000 copies first week, Yachty himself and his fans needed a revival of his career, and that's that, just what they got. <laughs> that was Krishna. Trafficking? Right. It could be some weird shit like that. It was just weird because they waited the whole time. She called me and said there was a car just waiting behind her in front. I went down there as soon as I opened the door. Mm. What the fuck? After LB3, a new Lil Yachty emerged. The nonchalant, goofy, and emotional teenage persona he had was behind him. The new Yachty was calm, collected, and moved like a boss. He stopped dyeing his hair, got rid of the beads in his braids. He still wore colorful attire, but it was now tasteful and sleek. He was focused, but still hungry. He started a nail paint brand called Crete, 
understanding that young Gen Z men painting their nails is normalized, and don't have a product marketed towards them. Concrete Boys became the name of his newfound imprint record label, and his first signee, Draft Day, an upcoming artist from Broward County, Florida. Yachty's song Coffin reflects a shift in his sound that would be celebrated and copied by many artists after him, then hit bout it with Kodak Black, then Cortex. Yachty found his flow. He wasn't trying hard to impress the old heads and he wasn't the childish auto-crooning singer. He achieved the perfect middle. His beats were more unique than ever and you could tell he had a chip on his shoulder, but also couldn't care less if you f***ed with him or not. His energy was contagious. He recorded an entire album with a bunch of rappers from Detroit, Michigan just to show love and embrace the sound that was taking over underground rap. Although some were surprised, Yachty has always showed love to new artists. Just look at his history of collaborating with buzzing talent. He was on Lil Baby's first album before he blew up. He made a hit with T Grizzly, D to the A, in 2017. He even did Gucci flip-flops with Bad Baby in 2018 when nobody would champion her music. Bro. Even Drewski, the biggest comedian to come from the social media era. His first major collaboration was a skit with Lil Yachty in 2019. Babyface. Oh my gosh. You see that statue? Era. His first you see that Deadpool statue? Bro. Major collaboration was a skit with Lil Yachty in 2019. Babyface Ray, Baby Tron, Baby Smooth are just three of the many Detroit artists bringing a fresh sound to hip hop. Their cadence is smooth yet savage, and the beats are bouncy, but they jam pack these songs with bars. Yachty teamed up with them as well as other buzzing Michigan artists on his album, Michigan Boy Boat. This album only sold 15,997 copies in the first week, and fans were confused by Yachty's decision, but he said, I just wanted to show love, that's it. I just wanted to show love to all of those guys and their talent, and I feel like I rap my best on those types of beats. Mm. A rapper who doesn't care about numbers, who is able to move based on creativity. That's how everybody needs to move. You gotta just do shit that you like doing, bro. Like, some shit not gonna hit, some people might not like shit, but it's like, bro, if you actually enjoy it, the people who actually fuck with you and see that you enjoy it will, will find enjoyment in, in it as well. And art, while constantly being on the forefront of the next wave, is dangerous. Boat had something up his sleeve. He continued to steamroll ahead with bangers like YAE Energy and rock climbing with buzzing rapper Remble. At the same time he was rapping his ass off, he dabbled in polar opposite genres with tracks like Love Music and Breathe Deeper with Tame Impala. He felt inspired by the psychedelic rock sound and announced that he will be ditching rap for his next album. It gonna be mid as hell. All his stuff be weak. Can't wait to see it flop like his last album. Like <laughs> Thriving off hate, bro. The negativity towards his expansion did not hold him back. He stayed low key, kept his head down, and got to work. He also developed a very close relationship with the biggest rapper in the game, Drake. Drizzy posted on IG saying, More life to my fellow brother Yachty. Happy we are locked in for a lifetime. Followed by a picture of them on a jet and Yachty branding a tattoo of Drake's OVO label on his wrist. But this relationship started with Yachty being a super fan of Drake. I, for a very long time, wanted to just do anything involving music with him. So, like, I kind of, like, been telling him for the last, like, I don't know how many years, like, bro, I'll... Can I just like, uh, can I even just be in a room? Drake has always been at the forefront of spoken into existence pop culture for the past 15 years. How he does this is by y'all say gay, but y'all will lose y'all mind and do anything to be not even in the room with Drake, just to be in the room with ye, you fucking dick writers. Come on now surrounding himself with young talent that will pioneer the next wave. Drake conveniently became Yachty's best friend when Yachty had his hands around the neck of the culture. He helped executive produce Drake's next album, Her Loss, alongside 21 Savage. Yachty is credited as a producer on four songs, each of which are some of the more euphoric and memorable beats on the record. He is also the one who sourced the cover art. Some people say he is the genius behind this record. Mm. And by mid-2022, Yachty was finally being appreciated for the genius he is. <laughs> That's this hardest shit ever, bro. And just before Yachty decided to release his psychedelic album, he went viral by accident. It's important to know that there is a huge community of rap fans who actively try to hack into artists' computers and phones to leak their music. However, one hacker straight up asked Yachty for the Poland record after he heard a snippet, and this is what- Yo, uh, buggy, boogie, boogie man, I appreciate you, bro. What happened? You have this song- it's all, it's all good. It's, it's all good. 
Oh, Poland, bro. We got uh like cameras on on like every part of the house, so. Please, bro, send it to me. Oh, I don't yeah. This is what happened. You have this song called Poland, bro. Please, bro, send it to me. And at the time, I'm like, bro, no one gives a fuck about my leaks, right? Like, well, I'll send it to him. Like, nothing's going to happen. So I send it to him. Well, Yachty was wrong. Once TikTok users heard his wiggly, wobbly vocal vibrato, <laughs> the memes started <laughs> pouring in. TikTok users heard his wiggly, wobbly vocal oh vibrato, the memes started pouring in. Rap has been in a long dry spell, so anything different was bound oh to get some attention. God. A lot of people treated the song as a joke. Others genuinely loved it. Yachty was kind of upset when it went viral because he didn't really like the song and he wanted to debut the wobbly vocal style on his psych rock album. But that's how it that's how it be, bruh. The fact that his throwaway songs he never wanted to release were going viral let him know that he was on top. And with that buzz, he finally released the psychedelic alternative rock album called Let's Start Here. Mm. Which could easily be one of the best albums of 2023. Talk about like it. his other albums, he only sold 36,000 copies of- Who cares, bro? Who cares, bruh? first week, but there was nothing but praise for his efforts on this album. The instrumentation was beautiful, bright, funky, and soulful, but also broke to periods of eerie trepidation. His use of heavy autotune and big room reverb felt like you were ascending towards the heavens on a trip. This will probably go down as one of the best genre transitions for a rapper in history. And the craziest part about it, he went right back into rapping after dropping this album, and dropped banger after banger mm -hmm. after banger. Mm -hmm. Strike, Slide, Solo Step and Creep Boy, Tesla. Go on TikTok and you will quickly see someone sharing one of these songs. Yachty has never been this consistent in his entire that career, and he knows just how much the rap game needs him, which he expressed on his track with J. Cole. Allegedly, they figured out that I'm the secret recipe. The standards have collapsed. They wrote me in with lames. They mm. treat me like I'm them, the mm. hate I overcame. Mm. Refuse to pat my back, refuse to shake my hand, mm. refuse to give me props when I'm not around, mm. refuse to act like I ain't shift the sound, mm. like I ain't push the culture. Mm. These bars encapsulate everything I said in this video. They they hated Yachty. They thought he was just another mumble rapper that would fall off. They didn't give him any respect and instead of tucking his tail, he worked his ass off. Now with hip hop being incredibly dry and boring, Yachty is one of the only ones bringing something fresh. Talk hip hop about it. now needs Lil Yachty. Talk about it, bro. Oh my gosh, cause bro, when that album dropped, oh, I was, I was not expecting that shit. Then that first song, I was like, hold on, hold on now. Hold the fuck on now. Another W video. yo. Patrick, Patrick, you just don't miss. You just don't miss, and this is about to hit Yachty him. is the living definition of, watch this. Exactly. Oh, oh, that's how you feel? All right. Watch this. Like, don't even, don't, repl don't even reply back to these dudes, bro. Don't even reply back to these dudes. Just watch this. Just watch this, man. Okay, chat. Last thing we do before we get to these albums, okay? Before we get to the Trippy Red, I'm, I, you know I'm excited for it, and then the Killer Roy, uh, by YouTube. 